Today we're gonna make protein rich classic Japanese breakfast. The main dish we are going to make is Japanese red bean rice topped with salt and black sesame seeds called Osekihan in Japanese. Osekihan is served on happy occasions. I remember my grandma made one on the graduation of elementary school and I didn't really like it back then. <laughs> Sorry grandma. But now I'm getting closer to 40s. I can finally truly embrace the taste. I keep everything plant-based including soup to accompany it so I hope many of you will enjoy the recipe. Recipe. At the end of this video, I have something to celebrate with you besides my birthday, so stay tuned, friends. We're gonna begin by making osekihan. We have 60 grams of red bean called azuki beans. Azuki is what you usually taste in Japanese confectionery, such as red bean paste. Rinse and drain the water, transfer to the pot, followed by one and a half cups of water. Once it comes to a boil, reduce it to simmer and cook it for 2 minutes, then drain the water. Red beans have a distinctive bitter taste. To reduce the bitterness, we do this quick blanching before we actually start to cook. Add red beans back into the same pot and add another 2.5 cups of water. Bring it to a boil, reduce it to simmer and cook it for 15 to 20 minutes or until the beans are cooked but still firm and retain the chewy texture and shape of it. By the way, the exact measurement is listed on my blog, the link is in the description box. In the meantime, let's prepare the rice. Rinse and drain the rice a couple of times until the water becomes milky white. Soak them in water for one hour. I'm using Japanese sushi rice, but traditionally, we use glutinous rice, which is used for making mochi. I was assuming not many of you have access to glutinous rice, so I'm opting for Japanese sushi rice today. Coming back to red beans, let's check on how it looks. I cooked it 15 minutes on low heat and it looks like this. It's still firm, but you can eat it. It's not mushy or losing the shape of the beans, which is exactly what we want. Remove it from the heat and keep the bean liquid into the separate bowls as we use the liquid later. This is my second batch cooking red beans for filming. I overcooked the first batch, so let me show you how it was for your reference. As you can see, some of the beans have a cracked skins and you can easily mash it with your finger. I cooked 22 minutes for this first batch. This leftover liquid contains compounds called anthocyanins, which have strong antioxidants. It contains 1.5 times more than the red wine does. By the way, we pronounce this anthocyanin in Japanese. So for me, I needed to practice anthocyanins 10 times before I record. It also contains saponin. Saponin is effective in preventing swelling and boosting immunity. This is all what I studied when I was editing. As I make more videos, I become more knowledgeable with you guys. Hopefully, I won't forget. <laughs> Top of the water until you hit 2 cups of liquid in total. Into the clay pot, add rice, red bean liquid, and salt. Mix that together. By the way, what do you call this leftover red bean liquid in English? Let me know in the comment section. Add red beans on top and time to cook it up. Once it comes to a boil, reduce it to low, close the lid, cook it for 10 minutes. You can of course use a rice cooker as you would cook a regular rice. I just wanted to give you as many options as possible. After 10 minutes, bring it to high for 10 seconds just to evaporate the moisture accumulating at the bottom. Turn off the heat and steam it for another 15 minutes with the lid on. We will come back later. In the meantime, let's make some soup, which is also protein rich. We begin by soaking dried shiitake mushrooms. This is gonna give the base of umami taste to the soup. 
I use pre-sliced one for the shortcut, but if you don't have one, just use regular dried shiitake mushroom and soak it longer according to the package instructions. In the meantime, we're gonna chop up all the vegetables. Thinly sliced carrot, chop onion into small pieces. Now for the celery. Again, celery is always hard to pronounce with a 2R. <laughs> we are not going to use the leaf part for this soup since it's a bit too overpowering in my opinion. This tiny bit of peppery taste will create a different dimension to the soup just like how any other herbs would work in the soup. Roughly chop the Chinese cabbage. I love to use the inside of it since the leaves are more tender and sweeter when it's cooked down. Remove the eye or potatoes where you taste the bitterness, then cut into 1 inch square cubes which is a little bit bigger than the carrot and onion since the potatoes tends to crumble apart as it's cooked. I keep the skin on but feel free to remove the skin. We got the sweetness from the onion, carrot, and Chinese cabbage, a bit of peppery bitter taste from the celery, and richness from the potato. You can always change up the vegetable after what's left in your fridge, but thinking of three different taste components will tend to bring the successful result. Season it with a half teaspoon of salt, bring it to the stove, and cook it on high. Once it comes to a boil, drop the heat to low and just mix it to make sure the salt is evenly distributed. Salt is what's gonna help to draw the moisture from the vegetable as it's cooked. Close the lid and simmer it until the vegetables are fully cooked, which took me about 10 minutes or so. After 10 minutes, the soup should be nearly fully cooked. Check the potato and if the chopstick or fork go through without any resistance, we can move on to the next step. Add more water and mixed beans. For the seasoning, we add soy sauce and black pepper. That's it. As you can see, the seasoning is very simple. That's why we need a variety of vegetables to make the complex flavor profile. To thicken the soup, mix soy milk and potato starch. Dissolve the potato starch completely before adding it into the soup. Otherwise, you're gonna have a lump as opposed to thicken the soup. Cook it on high and just before it comes to a boil, bring it to low and cook it until you reach your desired consistency. I added a bit too much potato starch, so I added more soy milk. Please adjust the taste with salt, pepper, and soy sauce to your liking. By the time our osekian should be ready, I always get so excited when I open the lid. <coughs> this aroma brings me so many good memories of old days, even though I didn't like it much back then. <laughs> there are a couple dishes I make when I just want to feel the home and family. Do you have those recipes too? I am so happy to share these recipes with you here. It won't be complete without gomashio, which is a mixture of salt and black sesame seeds. Sprinkle generous amounts of them on top, the nutty and toasty aroma of black sesame seeds followed by the hint of salt, mix it into the red bean rice. This is absolutely divine. I also serve it with the blanched spinach salad, drizzle some soy sauce or Japanese ponzu together with your favorite oil. For my case, it was a money oil. Like I mentioned, a lot of nutrition from red beans are water soluble, which means dissolved into the water as they are cooked. It's too motai night to toast the liquid away, so I recommend cooking the rice in red bean liquid, but it's also where the bitterness comes from. So if you taste it's too bitter, please reduce the amount of red beans liquid and add more water instead. Make a batch and keep it in the freezer for two weeks. I also like to pack it in my lunchbox. As you guys are staying this far, I'd like to share something to celebrate. First, Miwa's Japanese cooking turned 
two years old on February 22nd. It also happened to be my birthday. My family celebrated with this homemade messy cake. And also, our family has grown to 100,000 subscribers. I still can't believe this is happening to my channel. I remember last year on February, we hit 10,000 subscribers. February always happened to be a turning point for me. I got this silver plate. What do you call this? <laughs> I got this yesterday. It's been quite hard to make videos consistently as my kids are homeschooling. I could stop and take a rest anytime, but the only reason I can do this is because of you guys. This is my place to communicate with people all over the world who have similar interests. Many of you started to give advice to each other in the comment section. I love how you guys are supportive even though you never met each other. I'm still afraid of the internet world sometimes, but I'm hoping this community will continue to be a place where people give value and support each other. This is my hope. So, arigatou gozaimasu and thank you for all of you. Mata ne, bye bye. あこっち<笑><笑>みんな早くない、うん、うん。美味しい。美味しい。<笑>なんか大丈夫かな。美味しい。美味しい。<笑><笑>